Hi everyone, welcome to VFX Futures. I'm Ian Fales from beforesandafters.com and today we've got a special episode about editing. I'm joined by Matt Villa, who was the editor of Peter Rabbit 2. Hi Matt, how are you? Hi Ian, very well, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Actually, Matt, do you know this film by a couple of different names, not just Peter Rabbit 2? Oh, there's Peter Rabbit 2, there's Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway, or there's The Runaway, or, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it depends where you are in this crazy world. That's right. Matt, I, I've, I'm really stoked to talk to you because I don't always get to talk about the editorial process on a film, let alone the VFX editorial process, which is a whole other thing as well. Um. <laughs> Maybe for people who don't really know, what, what are the first things that you tend to do when you come on board a film? Or what was the first thing that you did on Peter Rabbit 2? Um, it's, a, it's an awesome question because it does differ. Uh, yeah, I've been blessed enough uh, to have a career that has that deals with uh, I've cut live action films as well as pure animated films, as well as hybrid films um a, a mixture of, of uh, live action and animation and it kind of does differ depending on what the project is um so in the case of peter Rabbit 2 uh as, as with um 100 animated movies the first step is generally to come on and uh and you cut a uh storyboard version of the film so there's a there's a group of storyboard artists who will um generate many 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 awesome looking uh panels that get cut together uh, it could also be a combination of um, storyboards or just you know animatics, like little um, little uh, computer um, uh, rudimentary pre-visualizations, um, and that the pretty much the entire film will generally get cut together like that because animation is so um, and visual effects in general are so expensive. Um, it, it, it's really important to get the the you can find the rhythms and the and the and the pattern of the story um, before you go out and spend all the money um, doing it for real. Um, so generally speaking, that's how that's how it starts. And then and so to so as it did on Peter Rabbit too, I came on. We didn't storyboard the entire movie um, or any of the sort of the key sequences that that involved um, sort of the rabbit switch, which was almost the entire movie. Um, <laughs> And it, it also it, it also just helps a lot, in these sorts of films. A lot of the story is found during this process. So there's always a script, um, but then you tend to go sort of off script a little bit um, as as you're finding the story and you um, and you're working your way through. So that's how it, that's how it starts. Generally speaking, on animated films, and so too on on Peter Rabbit. Um, yeah, is there also a process where you get any time with say the director will gluck in this case to talk about a style that he wants to go for editorially or otherwise and, and was there one on this film um that's a great question because it, it will gluck who is an awesome awesome individual um he kind of has a style unto himself <laughs> so and because i didn't do peter rabbit one uh, a very dear very good friend of mine uh, Christian Gazelle cut uh, Peter Rabbit one with uh, with Will, um, and uh, and the style of that film was very sort of evident when it came out. Um, it's very you know uh, fast and very um, uh, uh, quick and slapstick and so on. So this I knew I was kind of coming into the film with with an established kind of um, uh, look and feel to the movie. So so to answer your question, oftentimes yes. Um, but in this instance, not so much just because, um, because the, the kind of style was already there. And of course, Will and I, um, spent uh, a lot of the time during the shoot and then and during pre and then during the shoot and then in post, um, you know, refining the style and, and molding it to this particular sequel. Um, but the style was already there. So in similar way to when I came on, uh, to the Lego Batman film, the Lego Batman movie rather, mm -hmm. um, the style had already been established from the guys who did the Lego movie, so that you were kind of following that. Kind of thing. They sort of uh, there was definitely room for um, for taking the individual project into a different sort of area, but there was there was an established style to look. Right. Um, yeah. And and I guess from a from a visual effects animation crossover point, I think my listeners will be interested in 
what are you editing with? You mentioned this, not, I don't mean like necessarily tools, but although we'll get to that, but I guess what I mean is they, they go and shoot live action. Um, Animal Logic and other visual effects studios are adding in these CG bunnies and other creatures early on. What are you using to really lay out the edit? You mentioned storyboards and animatics, but tell me a bit more about that very early process as visual effects rolls on. Yeah, cool. Um, so you start off with the uh, the the pure storyboard version, um, and, and again, in the case of Peter Rabbit two, we didn't do that for the whole film, but just mm. for certain scenes. Uh, then the Will Gluck and the main unit, let's call them, they go out and shoot the actors um, uh, and all of the sort of the live action elements, um, uh, and then there's a second unit uh, which is not it's more than just your conventional second unit. It's, it's basically another unit. Um, they go out and shoot all the kind of mop up all of the plates and the, the clean, the, the clean backgrounds and mm. that sort of thing. Um, uh, that the, the bunny will be inhabiting in the case of the way Will, uh, likes to shoot and likes to have his films. He really wants the camera to be super fluid. And cause uh, so, I mean, conventionally, you know, in these sorts of films, you have, a static shot and all the all the animated characters would would um would do their thing in front of that static shot but it was really important for will to have the moving the camera move around and and do all the things that would happen in that if it was a live action actor so a lot of that timing hence the reason for the storyboard kind of version because you know, a lot of that timing needed to be to be set um and you know myself and others would do just temporary recordings of the dialogue just so you knew that you know, if a rabbit was going to be walking from one side of a field to another side of a field, delivering a certain line, a line of dialogue, you needed to know how long it was going to take them to deliver that line of dialogue while walking across the field. So that would mean that would let the the plate unit know that you know, even though they're they're filming nothing but grass and trees, <laughs> they need their, their camera pan needs to take them the time to get across. So. So that's what go, they, go, they go out and shoot. And that all comes back to me in the cutting room and I'll cut together the, the live action sort of uh, elements with the actors. And then uh, I'll be cutting away to these, these plates, these empty plates. Um, I've got the, the temporary recordings, which again is me or some other people just around the, the facility doing the dialogue. Um, and then the storyboard team that, that helped out originally swing back in and give me new storyboards against an alpha channel that I can put over the top of, of um, the, the clean plates. Uh, a lot of productions would go straight into sort of like a pre-visualization sort of mm. mode and take those plates, but it's so much quicker just to get the storyboard guys sort of a few panels that I can, that I can put over the top of the plates just to make sure it's all working. So you end up with this, um, with this sort of combination of live action and and uh, and storyboards, um, and then the third sort of round is you, you refine the timing, uh, and that then Will and I would get together and, and he will add new jokes or add new dialogue, which you can do when we're looking at the animated characters, and that's when you send it off to the animation guys and they sort of take those timings and do it, and then it's kind of like a third round when the animation comes back obviously you know i may not have known how fast a rabbit would walk from mm. one side to the other so you know i have been have to speed up the speed up the plane plate or whatever to to match what the animation guys come back with so it's a really you, you kind of are cutting the film three very individual times right which is which is really cool um and you know and and that's been the there's a lot lots of room for evolving and, and um and uh as I say, uh, new dialogue goes in, new jokes go in. Will is a really um, uh, um, collaborative and uh, ever-evolving kind of um, uh, guy. So when we're in the when we're in the cutting room, he um, we we do experiment a lot of, mm. with a lot of different gags and things. So where, where where were you based? Where was the cutting room? And and tell me a bit about the tools that you tend to use for the process as well. Uh, I was I was within Animal Logic um, in Sydney at Fox Studios in Sydney, and they were they were doing the uh, all of the all of the work. So it was, which is great because um, you know always had access to 
animators and they would come in and talk about it. Um, uh, I was using Media Composer, Avid. Um, what was particularly cool about this, uh, this project was that Will, he shot the film in Sydney and did a director's cut in Sydney, but then had to go back to LA. Um, so, and Post went on um, while he was in LA and we did a lot of this film. This is pre-pandemic, a lot of this film remotely where we had a, a clear view box. Um, so uh, he could have, have monitor what was on my avid in his office in LA. And then we just had like a life-size unit, which is you know, kind of like a industrial strength Zoom or FaceTime um, in a monitor in the corner. So, and he just sit there all day, like our, our hours, obviously there was a, they'd overlap from probably about five to seven hours a day. Um, and we cut the film, the majority of the film was cut like that remotely pre-pandemic. So we, we, we kind of are we were kind of <laughs> ahead of the curve when now and we did. Um, so, and that was it really. Um, yeah, so it's just, just um, media composer, um, uh, uh, version 19 or whatever it was. Right. Um, um, but yeah, that was, uh, and, and, and just to, to elaborate a little on that process, I mean, as, as you're cutting animal logic and a few other studios are, are working on the shots, is your mm-hmm. timeline just being updated with more finished shots as things go on? That sounds like an obvious question, but I'm curious how that actually happens. And do you get excited when you turn up and there's like new shots in your timeline, you know, that sort of thing? So excited. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean the uh, the, assistant, the assistant editors really are the machine of any cutting room, um, and uh, and I had two incredible assistants, um, Elliot Natman and Courtney Bowden, um, and uh, and then a team of visual effects editors as well, um, uh, who were sort of in charge of, of all those updating timelines and things. So yeah, absolutely right. So the, the timeline. A layer. And we, we try to keep all the layers there just so you can sort of refer back to, to things. And, and that's an awesome time capture. As it mm. turns out. You start with the live action and clean plates and the storyboard goes over the top. And then the, the, the um, you know, layout, which is the, the this really rudimentary grayscale animation. And then the, then the um, lighting comes in and the text is coming. And, lots of stuff. So you, and they're all stacked up in your timeline. So you, you're dead right there. It, it's, it's all there. Uh, it's generally updated for me outside the cutting room and and yes you when you open up and see these new shots it's just so exciting (laughs) (laughs) obviously the the characters bunnies and and other creatures are temporary until they're final i'm curious in avid are you also doing any temp effects you know like this film is shot on sets but also at centennial park which is in sydney are you doing temp comps temp skies temp london england things tell me about the that sort of temp effects side of things yeah sure um i personally am um mm. because um and, and the, the, the scope to do so is enormous because you can you know you can drop in an actor into one of the one of the clean plates that was shot for example or you can and and you know um you know i'm always sort of splitting things bits and pieces of different takes together and mm. that kind of thing um when it comes to uh, skies and backgrounds and stuff, um, I'll generally just hand because there, there are certain shots that they'll be what they'll be, like for an establishing shot of Centennial Park, for example, which is going to have the entire Sydney skyline removed and and a, a woodland put in. Those kind of shots kind of are what they are, so you can t- tend to send those off pretty early to to have work done to them, and the. Once again, it was the joy and beauty of being at Animal Logic that they were just right around the corner, right around the hall, and so you could sort of call them in and, and give them shots, and they could do the little temp, temp bits of work. Um, but yes, they're definitely if for the as, as a tool for telling the story. I am always splitting things in and comping things in, and and um, and uh, and just um, just to. Just to really rhythm things up and let the animators and the and visual effects guys know what the, what the intent is, um, right. but with with bonus of being able to handle over them, make it good. <laughs> I guess in that vein of of building up a scene and, and temp shots or anything, 
What was your toughest sequence to work on for the film? I love, of course, the heist, which was filmed out in Parramatta, Western Sydney, for people who don't know. And, you know, there's so much going on in there, things being pushed over, characters running. You know, you must have had to get speed right for a lot of those characters. But tell me about the toughest sequence. It might not be that one. It was absolutely that one. One hundred percent that one. Um, and, and for all of the reasons that you list, uh, it was a combination of stunt guys, actors, um, um, you know, the the sort of on set special effects guys with their little hydraulic things to push cheese over and to blow curry powder into stuntmen's faces and all that sort of stuff. Um, all had to be timed perfectly on top of which a lot of those a lot of those gags where the bunnies are taking down the the uh the farmers were kind of um either made up or embellished on the spot so uh there's a lot of things that kind of although they were um shot brilliant um they were kind of made up a little bit as they went along so it was a combination of everything that you said basically um for, and for all those reasons it was it was a tough scene just to sort of bring that all together in time as it, as an example there's the scene um if people have seen it where the uh, the deer gets smacked and and races through the street and pulls over a stall and then jumps into a van um or jumps over a van rather and and the um and the bunnies end up inside the van yeah that was needless to say that was the a guy in a blue suit pulling that cart <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> So all those sorts of things, and, and again, you know, how long does a deer take to run anywhere? Uh, it was, it was just, it was a lot of, lot of different timings coming together. So that was definitely the, the toughest scene. Will Reichart, the other Will, the VFX soup, told me yep. about an amazing dance sequence or song <laughs> sequence in that same market setting. That's a deleted scene. Did yeah. you work on most of that before it got deleted, or where where did that get up to? Yeah, sure. Um, it, it was well, there was a there's a cut. There is a definitely a cut in existence. Um, it was it was pretty quickly realised that it sort of wasn't going to have a place in the film. Um, but yeah, not not before we cut it together, and and it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was basically we'll we'll probably mention to you it was um, uh, farmers that the. For anyone who hasn't seen the film, the farmers are kind of the, the baddies. Um, the, uh, they're, not, they're not really the baddies, but in the rabbit's eyes, they're the baddies because, you know, they take everyone's food from, from the land. Um, and so this, uh, this, uh, they had this musical sequence where the farmers were singing basically how bad they are <laughs> and, and gloating in it. Um, so it was a really fun scene, um, but, and there's definitely an edit for it, but uh, it, it didn't sort of last too long in the film it's just, it was just out of place right I, i'm <laughs> curious though as an editor you must be so used to this when you have to cut something that maybe you thought was amazing in the story or even your own edit what is that like how do you how do you feel about that is that just par for the course you just you know what you're doing now you have to do it what was it like here and, and generally in films it's really tough it is tough i mean uh, well it's tough it's tough because you've gone to all the, you, you've sort of, to, to, to disprove a scene's worth, you've got to give it its best day in court. So mm -hmm. when it, before a scene is cut, you've worked really hard to try and make it work. Um, <laughs> so um, uh, you to, to, to do it justice. Um, so it is tough because you put a lot of work into it only to cut it out. Um, that's the, that's the uh, you know, the the um the uh conundrum of it is that you know you really want to put it in there just because you've done so much effort but within the storyteller and you realizes that if it doesn't work it doesn't work yeah. so but but it's, it's never easy and and the the worst situation to be in is uh and this often happens if a, if a film uh it has a projected length like a, a contracted length where it needs to be you know 98 minutes or 100 minutes or whatever it might be uh and you're sitting at 120 minutes and the studio is too long and you've got a whole bunch of scenes that that all work and then you've literally just got to take them out for the sake of getting down to time and uh or compress you can compress them down you can 
you can you don't have to remove entire scenes you can compress them down there's ways of doing that of course but but yeah that's when it's really tough because uh if it, if there's if it has a place in the story but still has to go that's that's a really difficult situation to be in right as an editor are you keen to add in easter eggs and things for fans to find i only just found out in this film because of the dvd release that if you zoom in like when they're holding a reflective is it a kettle or something i can't even remember what it is now you can see the boom mic you know a bunny yeah. holding a boom mic and i asked will yeah. about it but yeah. that's a cool moment tell me about that but any others that you added into the film that you're allowed to mention Oh yeah, no, for sure. All of that is the uh, um, the the VFX guy. Of course, you know, Will, yeah. Will Will um, Will uh, is an awesome, awesome guy, and a wicked sense of humor. Um, so to is Simon, Simon Picard, the animation director, mm. um, and uh, you know, we all got on really, really well, and have a have a great time together, and we we're always sort of joking around and, and will encourages this like will like is the, the the absolute captain of the folly um, when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to those sort of hijinks and uh i to be honest i i can't exactly remember the genesis of that particular shot that you mentioned um mm. i can't whose idea it was but it was definitely embraced <laughs> um, <laughs> um, um, well and truly um uh as for other easter eggs um there's a, a none spring to mind. There, there was no, you know. There's, there's obviously a few links, a few a Beatrix Potter links, mm. yeah, or winks rather in the script. Um, uh, and oftentimes you'll put sort of, um, you know, posters of uh, characters and posters in the background, like billboards or whatever. Um, uh, in there's, there's one scene when they're on the river when uh, Barnabas, uh, sorry, um, Benjamin and Peter uh, escaping the. The, that boat on the river there's uh will Gluck and his dad the, the two fishermen um but oh um, right um <clears throat> so that's that's a fun little fun little moment so you you know when those sorts of things come up as the editor you can afford will Gluck's dad a few extra frames just to make sure he uh, stays on the screen a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh yeah but a lot of those a lot of that because because of the nature of these films any of those sort of uh, things that, that you see in the background are obviously very well planned and executed. This has been great. Thank you so much, Matt. I have one question which I'm dying to ask visual effects people and editors and anyone in film during the pandemic. You know, obviously mm. you finished this film a long time ago and then it was, mm. you know, because of COVID. Was there any part of you that wanted to use that time to go back and do something? I know that's not always possible production wise and budget wise, but like, I'm like sure that VFX people are like, Oh, we've got a whole another year now we can do some more. Does that go through your brain? Is that a thing? Yeah, absolutely. We were 100% convinced <laughs> that as soon as, the, uh, as soon as the delay was on, that uh, it'd be real luck himself that he'd say, right guys, let's get back in. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, very, very, very much so. The uh, the the uh, heart is always willing, um, but the uh, the purse strings generally get in the way. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, and as you say, it's it's, it's a unique uh, set of circumstances. The pandemic. I I was in LA uh, doing the final mix of the film uh, in March twenty twenty. Uh, and uh and it was meant to come out like uh mm. oh sorry sorry no uh, february 2020 yeah. and it was meant to come out in, in, uh, the end of march and as i left la i think that was like the 6th of march as i left la the studio going hang on what's going on with this uh what's going on with this pandemic thing? <laughs> uh and literally as i left they were they were yeah they were saying we're going to keep an eye on what box office is what happens with box office this weekend mm. and I did with it. so it was that it was up close um uh, to to when peter was meant to come out and uh, pretty much by the time i landed back in sydney the announcement came through that they were delaying the, the first of many delays um and and yes very much so as everyone's thought of great let's get back in and, uh, <laughs> and i think the uh, the animation director Sai would have uh, loved to have gone in and, and fixed a few things up but, but yeah well you did an amazing job the whole team i loved it i laughed the whole time 
And, um, you know, the timing is amazing. So congratulations on the film, Matt, and thanks for talking to me about it today. Uh, and it was my pleasure. Thank you so, so much. I hope to do it again uh, one time soon. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Matt. See you later. My pleasure. Thank you.